Hey guys, VBM513 and Dubstep Troll here today, and we will be answering the question of whether or not Five Nights at Freddy's as a collected series is an overhyped and overrated one. Alright, the criteria. For something to be overhyped, it has to have been extremely promoted and publicized prior to its release. And for something to be overrated, it has to have a higher opinion of its gameplay than it actually deserves. Well, not just gameplay, but everything in general. But, but yeah, you got the idea. But now for, like, here's some information for those who somehow don't know what Five Nights at Freddy's is at this point in time. Alright, so uh, Five Nights at Freddy's is a series, like, it's a point-and-click horror game, basically, created by Scott Cawthorn. That's all you really know, need to know about what Five Nights at Freddy's is at, like, this point in time. Now, now let's move on to whether or not this is either overrated or overhyped or both. I mean, all right. So I'm gonna just start off with saying, when the first game came out, it wasn't really overhyped at all because no one knew about it. It actually was originally recommended to like YouTubers, you know, just random people on the internet discovered the game that Scott had made, suggested it to famous YouTubers, and they're like, hey, we'll play this. They play the game, it becomes very popular from there. So it wasn't. It wasn't very hyped to the first game. The second game didn't have that much hype either because between the first and second game, there was very little time. So there wasn't a lot of time to really get very hyped about it. But between the second and third game, there was a lot of hype. People were waiting for that third one. They had their masses ready to click on buy for that release date. So the third one had a lot of hype. I can tell this from um, pre like actual experience. Well, not like experience, but like I it happened to me. Like, I love the first Five Nights at Freddy's, so I was waiting for the second one, because I was like, I know he's going to make a second one. There's no doubt he's gonna not going to make a second one. But, like, when the second one came out, I didn't even know it came out. No one knew it came out. In fact, I believe it was, like, a week or two after the game came out, before the YouTubers were like recognized, oh, crap, this game came out. And the third one, everyone was, like, prepared for Scott to do that whole same, like, what was it? It was a month or two before the second one came out? Um... Uh... It was about two or three months versus about four or five, maybe six months between the second and third one. Yeah, so it was extremely fast for the second one. The third one, everyone was like prepared for that thing to go down. So, was it overhyped for the first game? No. Second game? No. Third game? Yes. Because, like, in my school, like, I could hear it anywhere I want. I could go to the mall and hear people, like, talking about it, like, Oh, guys, are you ready for the next Five Nights at Freddy's game? Blah, blah, blah. It's, like, way too hyped for what it actually is. It's a point-and-click game that's that's horror-based. So, let's see. So, two out of three were not overhyped. So, the series as a whole, would you say it wasn't overhyped? Um, a series as a whole? No. Since it's two out of three, I wouldn't say the whole series as a whole is overhyped. But definitely the Five Nights at Freddy's 3 was just way too hyped for what it is um uh, and now was it overrated uh, this i have to say like yes i loved it as a game series and everything but it got way too much praise for what it actually was why, why don't we start with the most recent edition of the game let's start <clears throat> with the third one. Oh, okay so the previous two games there was a difficulty spike at one point or another for for the uh, first one, when was that difficulty spike? I never got through it. Yeah, well, here's what I... Like, alright. You're talking about difficulty spikes. I get that. But I can tell you right now, like... Five Nights at Freddy's 1, not too big a difficulty spike until you had, like, Night 4. Then, you you know, shit started going down. I know Five Nights night at Freddy's 2. Night oh. 2, 2, what the heck? Night 1 was like, ah, oh, I get this, this is easy. Night 2 was so freaking... Hard. And Five Nights at Freddy's 3... I didn't struggle until Night 5. It was just click the audio button, keep them in the same place, and make sure your stuff doesn't break down. Yeah, so gameplay-wise, sure, it's kind of like... It's not really revolutionary game mechanic, but it is cool to see some new, something new. Like being trapped in one area, unable to move for a horror game. Which is cool and all, but nothing too revolutionary. Like everyone's like saying, like praising it for... But something huh. that all the fans expected and what Scott delivered, that fan, he delivered it beautifully. That fan? That fan. That fan has became its own internet meme, so, I mean, it's nothing too big. Okay, let's move on to 
The Easter eggs. The Easter eggs. Oh my god. Alright, so for Five Nights at Freddy's 1, the Easter eggs were found fairly quickly because they took the form as uh, posters and, you know, clippings from news articles that are hung around all the walls and stuff. Not hard to find. Five Nights at Freddy's 2, a bit more, like, well hidden to find, like, things like the mini games and little hints and clues to what's going on in the lore, Especially which will be another topic we're going to hit today, the lore itself. Especially that, like, Golden Freddy popping out with, in the party game. You really have to slow that down a lot to find that fifth child. If you're just playing it, you'd never spot that. But Five Nights at Freddy's 3, Easter egg-wise, I thought it was trash. Why? Because in the first run I was playing through the game without any knowledge of it, I found almost every single Easter egg. The only one I was not able to find by myself that dial pad. was the dial pad one. Because it's in the most random place. Like, here, click the tiles, bam, there's an Easter egg. No one was going to click the, those. Everyone was looking for, like... It's maybe like a phone or something you could type the numbers into. Everything else I found like instantly. It was no challenge at all. I but mean, um, I guess one other thing to take into consideration, I said I was going to bring it up already, for if it's overrated, is the story. Now the story is very immersive. It's apparently getting a movie because of its popularity and story. And for most people, it's the reason why they're actually buying the new, the new additions to the game series. Not for the gameplay. Not for revolutionary game mechanics or other, like, fancy graphic upgrades or anything, but for the lore and whether they can find the lore for themselves and finish the story of Five Nights at Freddy's. So, am I going to say it was it's overrated? Yes. I'm going to have to say positive it was yes because it was given way too much praise for what it actually is and that's still a point-and-click horror game in which you take the place of a night guard and you try not to get killed. So let's see. For I would say two out of the three games, the Easter eggs were moderately to well hidden. For one out of three games, not very well hidden. Uh, the story, it's very immersive. It takes a twist and turn in every game, and it always, it never fails to satisfy. What do you mean by like twist and turn in story? Like, in my opinion, it's it's all right. So it's cre it's a creative story, but it's linear. I'm still sticking with it being an overrated game series. You? Ah, uh, jeez. Overrated game series. Yeah, I, I would say so. Like, when I play Five Nights at Freddy's, I do expect a lot going into it. I'm not going to say I don't have a fun time, but I'm saying I expect more fun than what I get. Yeah, especially since he, uh... <coughs> it took so much time to make them. I'm exaggerating so much time like really I mean Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is coming up the movie's coming up and who knows if he's gonna make a fifth one at this point because I thought 3 was the end but guess not because he either wants more money or just thought hey I have a little more to tell maybe he should just write a book he'd be pretty good at it mm, yeah he, he, he could be pretty decent at it anyway here's the verdict I'm putting it like uh on your guys' screen right now overhyped underrated you can like this is a new series I'm gonna this should be fairly easy to spot out check mark equals yes X equals no fairly simple this is this is gonna be a new series we're gonna continue to uh, go on we're gonna split it off from not just games but also uh, videos like on the internet movies TV shows anything in general if you guys want to recommend anything as well that'd be fantastic because we do have things in pl in store but it's you guys who are ultimately ultimately going to watch it, so it's your guys' opinion that matters most. But before we go, you should know, we're not saying that Five Nights at Freddy's is a bad game. It's a really fun game. It's something that you should definitely look into playing if you're looking for, you know, a simple horror game. It's, de it's definitely something worth looking into. But for what it's worth, it's not overhyped, but it is overrated. But you are still going to have fun playing it. Uh, next one we're probably going to make may be Destiny, which I know is going to get quite a bit of backlash, but what needs to be said needs to be said about the series. Now, whether Activision did it or not, or if it was Bungie that caused the issues and whatnot. And we're going to be doing that one out. with 3 Gizzle Pro. Our of course, we, we need to have our Bungie fanboy, 3 Gizzle Pro, to help do it with us. Because you guys, there's going to be an argument, and it's going to be very loud, because 3 Gizzle Pro is like a diehard for the, like... Bungie like any Bungie company, game everything. created, whether it be Halo or uh, Destiny, you name He's it. He's the type of guy who like 
defend a Bungie game. If they made it to be like, if Bungie made a game intentionally to be trash, he'd be the one to defend it, saying it's the masterpiece of the year. He is that guy. I look forward to arguing with him. Oh, yeah. His arguments are fun and all, but he does argue kind of like my little sister, just very linear, like, well, oh, no, it's good. It's good. It's good. Well, he'll, he'll make maybe one good point, maybe two, if he's lucky on a good day, but still, it's kind of funny to see him get worked over at being wrong. Well, we're dragging this on for too long. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good rest of your day. Not much more to say about that. If you're going to bed, good night. If you're going to bed, good night, sweet dreams. Don't fall out of your bed.